What's up YouTube? So today we're going to be doing a project where we predict the scores of NFL games. Have you ever been looking at the games for the week and you see a game and you just don't know who you think is going to win? Now if you're a casual fan you probably just look away and enjoy the game but if you're into sports betting or fantasy this is actually a much bigger problem. So today what we're going to do is build a model that's going to predict the scores of future NFL games. So this model will be built in R, but don't worry for you Python people, I do have other versions that are built in Python and I'm going to link those videos below. And first, let's start by making a plan. This is probably the most important step because I promise you just jump right into the project. At some point, you're gonna be heading in the wrong direction. Let's actually outline the problem and decide what we are trying to do. I really wish my client would do more of that. So we want to build a model that we can run on a weekly basis that'll predict the scores for all of the NFL games for that week. So if you were gonna do this on your own, you would get out your phone or your computer and you would look up all the matchups for that week. Then you would go through each matchup and pick out the team that you think has the highest chance of winning the game based on your knowledge of the team, their past performances, and who the home team is and who the away team is. The model we build is going to do the same thing. So we're going to need to collect past NFL game data that's going to contain all the outcomes, scores, locations, and game statistics for the past games. Then we're going to train a model that ingests all of this data and learns the relationship between the game scores and all of the game statistics. And then we're going to use this model to predict future scores based on what it's learned. Now, this is where the majority of the project was spent for me. I explored many different solutions, first looking at APIs and R packages that would fully automate the data pulls every week. Unfortunately, I searched far and wide and I couldn't find anything. Why is this so difficult? I looked at NFL API, which is supposed to pull statistics from NFL.com, but it hasn't been updated or maintained. I even looked at purchasing the data or looking for monthly subscriptions, but these things turned out to be the biggest waste of time because the costs were just ridiculous and the free versions only had scramble data that was unusable. Most annoying thing is that I've been able to do the same thing for the NBA pretty easily. So look, if you find an API or a package that automates the pulling of NFL data and is free, please do the lore's work and let me know. Now the last method I looked into was web scraping the data. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any experience web scraping, but if you do, this would be a great option to help you automate all the data pools. So now that all else has failed, that leaves me with only one option, which is pulling it manually. Not gonna lie, this is tedious, it sucks, it's my least favorite thing to do, but it gets the job done. What I did was go on to stathead.com where I was able to get a cheap membership and download all the data I needed as XML files. I downloaded all NFL game data from 2018 to 2021, which is three full seasons of game data and all the games in 2021 up to that point. I pulled all the data that I had for penalties, total yards, rush stats, and passing stats and put them all into separate folders. Now it's time to build a script to build our data set. Now that we have our data source, we can build a script to combine all the files into our data set. Here I've built a function to read in an XML file into our R environment and a function that'll read in all the files in a folder. Combined, we use the apply function to read in all the files from all the folders and store them combined into four separate data frames. Then these data frames are merged together to form one data set. As you can see, I've gone through all the variables in the data and selected the ones I want to keep for the modeling. And for this data set, I had to do a few data cleaning things like renaming the columns and parsing the results column. Then I created the opponent table. What this table has is all the data you just saw, but every observation also has the data from the opponent for that game that was played. This ensures that the data we have really shows the head-to-head -head matchup and has the data for both teams for each game. Now this process was initially done using the 2018 to 2021 week 6 data and the output was stored in a CSV file. I did this because the data is historical, it's not going to be changed, it doesn't need to be cleaned or updated anymore. So we can just import the CSV whenever we need to use the data for the data modeling. But we're going to need to run this process on a weekly basis for the games that were just played. 
So I created another directory weekly update where I will put all the data from stathead.com after the NFL games for the week and then rerun this process just with that data. Then I just have to merge the new data and the historical data together. And that is how we create our data set for modeling. Now our data set has everything, the location of the game, the total yards, the opponent statistics, and the identification columns like the team, the week, the year, and how many points they scored, which is our dependent variable. Keep in mind I've already standardized this data because we're going to be using a neural network. Now onto the modeling. We're gonna create a neural network using Keras to predict the scores of the NFL games. First, you'll have to download the Keras package for R that will install the TensorFlow and Keras backend if you don't already have it installed. The documentation can be found online at keras.com. So we already have our data frame, that's games data right here that we already created. So the first thing we're gonna do is separate the labels from the data. X is all of our game statistics, while Y is tm.score, which is our dependent variable. Then we're going to split our data into training and testing sets by randomly selecting 70% for the training and 30% for the testing. You can also do an 80-20 split if you want more data for the model to learn from. Then we're going to get into building the model, and this is the part that you can really have fun with. The performance of a neural network varies greatly with parameter tuning, so make sure to experiment with at least the number of layers, number of nodes in each layer, activation functions, and the optimizer that you use. This model uses two layers using the very common ReLU activation function for each one, and the first layer has 16 nodes, and the output layer has one node for one output. Then we compile the model specifying the loss function, optimizer, and metrics. The value of these depends on if you're doing a classification or a regression, and we're doing a regression. Now is the part where we actually fit the model to the training set. We need to specify the training data, the labels for the data, the batch size, and the number of epochs. The batch size is the amount of observations that will be fed through the network before the weights are adjusted, and the number of epochs is the number of times the complete data set will be fed through the network. Now the way I adjust parameters is by starting off simple with 1 to 2 layers and experimenting with 4, 8, 16, or 32 nodes and seeing which has the best performance. Then I start changing the activation functions and the optimizers. And then when I've selected the best optimizer, I actually go back, add another layer, add more nodes, and check out the performance with that. Then when I'm happy with that, I'll go back and then start changing the batch sizes and epochs. Now this is just how I do it. It's actually kind of an art form. I don't typically use grid search unless I'm cool with my laptop running and getting overheated for God knows how long. And when I'm done and happy, I actually rebuild the model with the same parameters using 90% of the data. Because since we're going to actually use the predictions this time, it's better to give the model as much information as possible. And now is finally time to make some predictions. Since we're going to be creating a head-to-head -head matchup prediction, we're going to take the average of the past few weeks of statistics to be used as the inputs for the model. So since we're predicting week 11, we're using four weeks to average, each team will be using weeks 7, 8, 9, and 10 for their statistics. And if they had a bye week for one of those weeks, then week 6 will be used. So we're going to take a file that has the schedule of all of the NFL games for 2021, clean it up a bit, and get the matchups for the week. I created this function that takes the matchup for the week and averages the last n weeks for data for each team. Then our testing data frame has two rows, one for each team in the matchup. Now this is the part that I thought of myself, my own method for modeling. Let me know what you think in the comments. But to create the matchup data, I take the offensive stats for one team and replace them with the defensive stats for the other team. This is essentially a way of saying this will be the expected offensive output for this team given what the defense of the other team usually allows. I'm expecting this team to have these offensive stats because this is what the other team gives up. I do the same thing for the other team, creating a score prediction for both teams. And obviously, the team with the higher score wins. So right now I'm going to give it a quick run just to show you guys what it all looks like. It doesn't take very long to run at all. The model is training right now using 90% of the 
training data. As you can see on the testing set, the model was off by about 3.27 points per score that it predicted. And then it will output scores for that week. So I made a script to score the Model 2 based on the actual outcomes of the game. I already ran that, it'll be on my GitHub. Here's a Excel version that I made that's a little easier to read and let's take a look at how it did in week 11 of this NFL season. So it actually predicted the correct winner 10 out of 15 times, got the correct over under 10 out of 15 times, and had the correct spread 11 out of 15 times. Not bad at all, definitely a usable model, and that's exactly what we're going for. I'm gonna continue to use this model on a weekly basis and score it. Follow me on TikTok to see the weekly predictions. All this code will also be available on my GitHub. Any questions, comments, leave a comment below. Like and subscribe for more Data Life, Dat A Life content. Peace, deuces, see you next time.